This sequence of videos corresponds to section 8.4 in Knight, and this is actually thinking through circular motion. So I'm calling it circular motion reasoning. The book called it thinking about circular motion. I like this because we can then call it circular reasoning. Um, we are really going to be applying some Newton's laws to some circular motion cases, and in particular, looking at some counterintuitive phenomena. So these are things that before you take physics class, or perhaps even if you've had a physics class before, the way that you might think about these situations is incorrect. You might make some incorrect predictions or talk about it in the wrong way. And a big part of this is going to be objects traveling in vertical circles. So even though we're, we still haven't talked about non-uniform circular motion, we have all of the tools we need to analyze vertical circles. The big learning outcome here is problem solving, that these questions can be really tricky in that if you start by assuming the wrong thing about net force or the wrong thing about a normal force, everything is going to collapse in your calculation. So it's really important, as always, to start with your free body diagrams. We're not doing anything different with our free body diagrams now. We are just recognizing that we must really think carefully about the physics when drawing free body diagrams for some of these tricky situations. The first situation I want to talk about is the idea of reference frames and what happens when you are in circular motion. So imagine this car, which is going around a turn. If you are the person in the car, you might feel as if you are thrown towards the door, right? So in this case, you're the passenger, so you'd say the right side passenger door. But that's not what's actually happening. There is no force pushing you outwards. And this is not truly a free body diagram. This is just a little sketch. And what we're showing is that Newton's first law says that you would keep moving forward in a straight line if there was no force acting on you. And a second thing to notice is that there's a circle here. And so in order for you to go in that circle, there must be a net force towards the center, right? And so this is effectively Newton's second law. So we see that there must be a force because your motion is not in a straight line. We can use Newton's second law and knowing that the acceleration is towards the center of the circle to say your net force must be the, towards the center of the circle. And what we would say is as this car turns and the door pushes against you, that passenger door pushing against you, that is what pushes you in a circle. You might also have, say, the friction force of the seat or something like that. But for this case, we're considering the door pushing against you. So the reason that this is important to talk about is that if you imagine yourself in the car, if you imagine yourself in the car and then try to do some physics here, what you feel will mislead you. That remember that we actually do our physics when we're in inertial reference frames. So this is not an inertial reference frame. It is not a reference frame moving at a constant speed in a straight line. Now, if we have a person standing out here on the road, they can do physics. Yay, physics! So they are able to do physics because they are in a, an inertial reference frame. But the person in the car that's turning is certainly not in an inertial reference frame. So be really careful about that. Only do physics in inertial reference frames. Now, I'm actually going to say something here uh, that I'm not going to write down so that maybe uh, you won't think of it the same way. When you're in the car and you feel that force outwards, again, it's not a real force. You don't feel anything pushing you outwards. What people would call that potentially is centrifugal force, but that's not a thing. And what this gets referred to is a fictitious force. It's not really a force. It's not there. Newton's law says this is all you need to worry about. You have inertia forwards from Newton's first law. We have a force inwards, which is the door pushing on you. But when you're in a non-inertial reference frame, things feel differently. And so you might refer to this, centri this centrifugal force, which is in fact a fictitious force. So in this class, you should never be talking about centrifugal force which is different than centripetal force, which we just call net force towards the center of the circle. 
uh, the only time you should ever talk about centrifugal force in here is to say that it doesn't exist, that it is not real, it is not a thing. Um, so that's pretty important. Please, please, please only use the inertial frame of the person actually standing on the ground. If you're in a car and you're thinking, wow, this is funny, what is that force that is pushing me towards the outside of the car? Just remember, you can't apply Newton's laws. You're not in a valid reference frame for doing physics the way we've talked about it. Again, physics has tools that would allow you to do physics here, but they're really hard. We don't use those. So please just use an inertial reference frame. I want to give some, some more striking examples of this idea that what you feel when you are in the situation is different from how you analyze the situation from a physics point of view. The book has this nice little sketch talking about an amusement park ride. Now I realize that you might not necessarily recognize what this is or what this does, but some of you have maybe been on this ride before. And the idea is it starts spinning with the wheel horizontally and then it turns vertically and the people aren't falling out. If you are in the ride, it feels like there is a force away from the center of the circle and you feel pressed against the wall. But that, again, isn't the right way to think about it. If we think about, say, this person, the free body diagram we would draw here is that you have a, a normal force pushing on them towards the, uh, towards the more or less the center of the circle, and you have the gravitational force. I've used a different color since they're kind of on top of one another. And, and that's it. Remember, force of motion is not a thing. We have to identify the agent in every situation. So our only forces would be the normal force and the gravitational force, which are both towards the center. So we would say that our net force is very large and towards the center. But that makes sense, that for this person, we see that they're traveling in a circle. So in fact, the tangential, oh, this is definitely a weird picture to draw this on. The tangential components there, the radial components, something like that. And so we do see that we expect a net force towards the center if they're traveling in a circle. At a, and in this case, if we say it's a constant speed and we know the radius, we could actually calculate it, right? So if we have a certain angular speed, we can calculate exactly what this net force should be. So what you feel is actually the wall pushing against you. But when you're in the moment, you get the direction of the forces wrong. So please be careful about that. And again, let me just briefly show you what you've maybe been on in the real world that the book has simplified down here. The ride that the book is referring to is this one, where it's very open and it starts horizontal and then eventually uh, actually lifts up. So possibly you've been on this, again, in amusement parks or, or fairs. The other one that I grew up with is the spaceship looking thing. And that's a little bit different in that you actually start laying slightly backwards. I don't, I didn't find a picture of it inside. I don't know if you've been on this, but you start, one version is you actually lie on a little platform and eventually this starts spinning really, really fast and the platform slides up so that your feet are no longer on the ground. And if you look, you imagine a person going from laying here to actually laying higher up, they're now actually at a larger radius. So this is that idea that once you, you have a normal force that has a component that's up, not just towards the center. So again, the main point that I want you to take away from these is that what you feel when you're on the ride is what we call a fictitious force, because really the forces are just the normal, normal force pushing against the surface, uh, like normal, and the gravitational force. There's no force outwards away from the circle. So please be careful. And this centrifugal force spelled this way, this is not a thing. It does not exist. It sometimes might get referred to in physics books at lower levels or old-fashioned physics books, but now the approach is to just say, listen, this isn't a thing. Everything we've taught you up till now, that's what you need to use. Please don't start referring to this. So this is not a thing because it's the force away from the circle. Sometimes we call this force the centripetal force. And note that 
the book only refers to centripetal acceleration. We don't ever talk about a centripetal force because it's just the net force towards the center. It isn't any sort of special force. So centripetal refers to the acceleration towards the center. Centrifugal force refers to a thing you shouldn't use in Dr. Ackerman's physics class.